Earwig and the Witch is the latest film from Studio Ghibli and the first film they've released in six years after when Marnie was there. This is also the first fully CG animated film as it has been promoted and it definitely lives up to that marketing. This is the third film from director Goro Miyazaki who directed Tales from Earthsea in 2006, which I thought was Ghibli's worst film, and 2011's From Up on Poppy Hill, which I thought was a major improvement. This is also the second adaptation from a novel by Diana Wynne-Jones, the other being 2004's Howl's Moving Castle, and it was almost the first film since The Tale of the Princess Kaguya in 2013 that would have premiered at Cannes Film Festival, but unfortunately, it was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Set in 1980s England, the movie follows a 10-year-old girl named Earwig, or Erica Wig, who gets adopted by a witch named Bella Yaga and a demon named Mandrake. And when she gets to the house, she is subjected to numerous chores and punishments when she doesn't do what she's told. But over time, she decides she'll learn to do magic herself and go against her new guardians. What the hell is this? What the actual hell did I just watch? All right, before I get to really my main gist with this film, I gotta mention one thing, and it's something that everyone has talked about before this film came out, and even more people are gonna say it now, and that's the animation. The only comment I can say is it could have been worse. It's not great, but it could have been worse. It could have seriously been worse. Compared to other films that came out this year, like Soul, it is atrocious, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. We live in a world where Exarm exists. Because my soul is still here. I am just going to be grateful that we got what we got. Now, before I get into what I think is wrong with the film, I'm going to mention a couple of things I thought were pretty good. The first one being the music. There are a number of light rock tracks that are sprinkled across different parts of the film. It fits with the tone very well, and I didn't really have an issue with it. And the voices are, are done very well, too, the casting. But this is also where I get into my issues with the film. And it's not the voices that I have a trouble with, not the cast, because I just said I liked it. It's how they were integrated with the character. And by that, I mean how the voices come out and how they just do not fit the mouth movements at all. And it's because it's a CG animated film. If this was 2D, this would be something that most people would overlook. And either most people would overlook or others would say is a very impactful part of the film because it helps immerse the viewer in. That is definitely something that you can argue in other Ghibli films like Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away with great dubs. Here, it looks like regardless of how great the dub is, it just doesn't work. It's because of how the mouths move. It's very uncanny. The characters were another issue I had with the film. Really, you don't know much about the characters. All you know about Erica, the main girl, is that she is a very, she is very pushy and she likes pulling pranks on people. And there's really no development per se. And there's really nothing that prevents her from not doing this. It, it, it feels very unfinished. And for the Bella Yaga, which is another character, Bella Yaga and the Mandrake, there are two other characters that you start to know more about in the film. But the issue is, you know more about them at the end of the movie. And overall, they are just not fleshed out enough for you to care. But really the biggest issue I have with this film, and it does connect with what I think about the characters, this movie is 85 minutes long. If you take away the opening segment and the ending credits, it is 75 minutes long. It should not be this short. A good way to summarize what happens in this movie, thanks to the runtime, is nothing fucking happens, and when things start to happen, the movie ends. This movie has two acts. A movie should not have two acts. There should be a third act in this film. And to me, that's the smoking gun because when you really look at it, and I know the process of making a live action film is different than making an anime film, but I don't know if there is an excuse for this. Because that's the one thing that really bugs the living hell out of me when I keep thinking about this movie is what could have been, is what could have happened had this film been written with a climax. The script is the worst part of this movie. While I was doing some research, I found out that Hayao Miyazaki was the one who bought the rights to the book and decided to give the go-ahead to Goro, who had his own team, frankly. He was the only guy in the studio who knew how to make 3D animation, who knew how to make a film like this. And the thing that makes a lot of sense is during this whole production, Goro never talked to both his dad and Toshio Suzuki, and it fucking shows. 
I tried not going on the bandwagon of people who hate this movie because it's completely different. In fact, I was kind of open about it. It was kind of supporting it in a way because this is something new that a studio like Studio Ghibli, knowing what we know now with the film production being gone and Hayao Miyazaki spending probably another five years working on what might be his last film, I was supporting it. And when I saw the reviews, I thought, okay, this is just people who don't like change. No, this is nothing to do with the studio changing visuals. This is everything to do with the structure. The structure of the movie sucks. The characters are not fleshed out enough. It's uncanny as hell. I am definitely not going to watch it again. I found out just a couple months ago this movie is eligible to be nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Feature. Now, for anyone who has seen my Your Name video, you know how much I want films from other countries, especially animated films, to get represented. Here, I actually don't want this film to get nominated because this is, this is gonna hurt my head for a while. I'd rather see the Demon Slayer movie get nominated over the disc. I would rather see Ride Your Wave get nominated for the best animated feature over this movie because this is very hard to comprehend. Point is, this film's bad. Okay, there's nothing I can say after this that could prove the point even further. I hope it doesn't get nominated for an Oscar. This is easily the worst film from the studio, and I'm just going to cut it off there. There's only one thing I could say. You can give a lot of crap to Tales from Earthsea. At least Tales from Earthsea had a climax.